additional time. And no matter what happens in the game, we're leading if we are down or whatever. We always, uh, as a team, try to be a pretty aggressive approach. And hopefully our fans can see that we want to be an aggressive team already starting from Wednesday. No problem. Uh, Jim, if we jump to you on Zoom. Yeah. Uh, hi, Paya. Uh, Paya, many uh, congratulations on the Barnsley uh, job. When you, you look at the uh, profile of your squad, you mentioned there about working with young players. There's not many players in the Barnsley squad that are over the age of 25 or 26. Is that a concern facing into a relegation battle that you don't have experienced veterans in the squad? Well, I don't try to think too much about what I don't have. Uh, I think I put the focus a lot on what uh, what I have actually, and um, what can happen with a team that has a lot of young players is that when you are uh, 24, 25 years old, you're among the oldest players in the team, and if you put that same 24, 25 year old in another team where the average age is 30, he will feel young. So hopefully, uh, for us, it's about creating younger leaders than what is normal in other clubs. And I suppose, Paya, you mentioned there working in IFK Gothenburg, a, a, a club with huge tradition, huge history, an awful lot of legends in the club in the past, like Jesper Blomqvist, I mentioned, name, name one or few. But uh, in terms of the expectation that comes with uh, managing Gothenburg, there's an expectation to get results. Do you think that's going to benefit you here at Barnsley, carrying that weight that you would have had on uh, being managing Gothenburg? Definitely. Um... I mean, uh, I was 32 years old uh, when I was in charge of IFK Gothenburg. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, I don't come from a playing history of being a player on the highest level. Uh, but I know that I, I got that job because of what I have only done as a coach. Uh, and now I come to a new country where nobody knows probably who I am since before. And um, for me, the best preparation for that has been to have a team like Gothenburg because uh, it comes a lot. It's not only about being a football coach when you coach a team like Gothenburg. There's a lot of other aspects that you have to also experience and handle. And I cannot say that I will handle everything here in England in a perfect way because I've never experienced England, English football, English journalists and so on. Uh, but I don't think my experience with Gothenburg will... will uh, well, I think my experience with Gotham will, of course, help me to handle it in the best possible way. And Paya, finally for me, uh, in terms of Barnsley, last year they had a terrific campaign. They, they reached the sort of playoffs. So this year, obviously, things then gone to plan. But here's a club that competed at the Elms, the top of the championship last year. So it is a club that has achieved big things in the past, not so long ago as well. So there's the expectation, I suppose, in that locker room that if this club can get on a bit of momentum, it can move up the table. Well, as I said, I don't like to talk too much of what has been. I neither like to talk too much about what has been last year or the last games. Uh, what I do know is that usually you, you as a player, you think that when you're winning games, you're usually probably usually use usually you're not that good as you think you are after scoring ten goals or winning three games in a row. And just as much aren't you uh, as a bad player as you are after not losing uh, not winning a game in ten games, for example. I think usually the truth is somewhere in, in between. And uh, where Barnsley is as a football club or how we are at the end of the season is difficult for me to say how, how big the potential is. But hopefully I, we, we can improve from now. That's our ambition. Now let's see at the end of the season how, long it, how far it took us. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, everybody. Well done. Thank you, Jim.